Good evening, everybody. Thank you. This is the public hearing of the San Benito CIC Board of Trustees at Landrum Elementary. It is Thursday, January 25th, and it is exactly 6.06 p.m. I call this meeting to order. Mr. Mendez? Present. Ms. ML Garcia? Present. Ms. Ana Cruz? Mr. Joji Gonzalez? Mr. Orlando Lopez? Present. And Mr. Victor Rosas? Present. So we go into the discussion of rezoning, which is Dr. Carmen's presentation. Uh, but first, I'm gonna say a few words just to kind of set the, set the tone for tonight's meeting. Um, I thank everybody who's here tonight. We are definitely, um, as you know, making changes as a district, uh, assessing things where we are currently, where we've been and where we are, and obviously where we're going to be. So a lot of that is, uh, as you know, repurposing uh, Dr. Garza uh, Elementary, Dr. Raul Garza Elementary as a, as a STEAM Academy. And we were there last night. With, uh, with a large crowd as well, with, with parents who had questions and clarifications. And then of course, uh, our second option, which we're doing tonight, is addressing you all because we are repurposing this as a new educational complex. Uh, what's important to understand is that as a, as a board, we are making changes that are in the best interest of students and that are in the best interests of, of parents and staff and whatnot. And I'm gonna take this time to introduce Dr. Quesada because she will also be translating what we are saying up here as we go forward. So if you wouldn't mind Dr. Quesada translating that first part. Buenas noches. Uh, el señor Vargas, presidente de la mesa directiva, les da la bienvenida por venir hoy a escuchar las presentaciones de propuestas que se están haciendo para el distrito escolar. Ayer estuvimos en la escuela Dr. Garza con una propuesta para una academia que se llama STEAM. Hoy se propone otra, otro plan para la Escuela Landrum y, y el doctor Carmen va a comenzar con una presentación acerca de esa propuesta. And so with that, uh, the idea that we are doing this in the best interest of students, and Dr. Carmen will get into the details, but I, like I said, I want to set kind of the tone is that we are, we are in the business of educating all students. So we want to make sure leaving here tonight, especially answering your questions, any qualms that you have, we want to make sure we address those, that your, your students will still have that option of, of attending a San Benito School District school. And even then, the STEAM Academy, your, your students will have the opportunity to apply to that campus as well uh, once all of that is finalized. So like I said, I wanted to set the tone and make sure that you leave here tonight with your questions answered and your qualms kind of ameliorated and making sure that we're, we're moving forward positively and constructively as a district. And the most important thing too is that we're here for a reason to get your input. This is just a proposal. We want to get your input as far as like, as far as what questions you have and any other things, small things that maybe as a board or as an administration we haven't thought of. It's one thing as a board to pass it and execute it without any input from the community. But this is a board that's fully transparent and fully in communication with our, our stakeholders, the taxpayers, the parents. And so we want to take this opportunity to, to make sure that we're all on the same page moving forward. Más que nada, esta reunión es para que ustedes no se vayan con preguntas y dudas. Y queremos aminorar cualquier preocupación que ustedes tengan acerca de estos cambios. Esta mesa directiva es transparente y quiere hacer lo mejor para el distrito. Y una cosa es que ellos propongan y ejecuten, y otra cosa es tomar en cuenta las opiniones de la comunidad, como lo vamos a hacer el día de hoy. So now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Carmen for his presentation. Ahora el doctor, el doctor Carmen va a empezar con la presentación y después de eso va a haber tiempo para preguntas. All right, thank you, Mr. Vargas. <clears throat> At this time, we're going to transition um, so we can show a presentation here with some information, uh, about 20 to 30 minutes to give you some information. Once that com is completed, uh, we'll have a question and answer period for each of you. Uh, after that, the board members will, uh, will speak on tonight's events, and that will uh, wrap it up. But uh, we're going to transition here as quickly as we can for you. 
Ahorita es un periodo de transición, nada más mientras, mientras los miembros de la mesa directiva bajan para que baje la pantalla, el doctor Carmen exponga su propuesta y después de eso habrá tiempo para preguntas. All right, so this evening we're going to talk about using our existing buildings within a San Benito CISD in an efficient and effective manner, beginning with the 2018-19 school year and beyond. Vamos a empezar con el uso eficaz de los edificios existentes del año 2018 y 19. Um, I'll begin with the um, proposals we have in front of the board at this time. Uh, are in alignment with uh, some goals from our five-year strategic plan for our school district. Specifically, it was determined San, B uh, San Benito CISD will improve our functionality, our energy efficiency, security of all campuses and district facilities. Second, that we will utilize an efficiency audit we had conducted. And third, that we will maintain efforts to streamline systems and our operations as a district. Vamos a comenzar también exponiendo algunos de los objetivos del plan estratégico de cinco años del distrito escolar y tres de esos objetivos son los siguientes. El primero es que el distrito mejorará la funcionalidad, la eficiencia energética y la seguridad de todos los planteles escolares y las instalaciones del distrito. Segundo, el distrito utilizará la auditoría de eficiencia. Y por último, el distrito mantendrá los esfuerzos para agilizar los sistemas y las operaciones. All right, so some of the uh, facility concerns that uh, were presented to me shortly after I came on board uh, this past September and others as we determined as we began to look at our, our campuses and our buildings across the district, uh, I'm going to focus on, on these three areas. Uh, the first one is our uh, Positive Redirection Center, or PRC. Um, it, it was obvious that our portable buildings were in very poor condition, and as they are portable buildings, the efficiency of those buildings um, was just not up to par. Um, cooling those buildings is inefficient, um, costs a very high rate, and they were never meant to be permanent. They're portables. They were never meant to be a permanent solution. Cuando el Dr. Carmen llegó al distrito y empezó a evaluar los edificios, se encontró con varios uh, detalles de preocupación, y uno de ellos fue el edificio que se utiliza para la escuela PRC. Los edificios portátiles de esa escuela están en malas condiciones y también el consumo de energía es muy ineficiente. Pero de hecho, esos, esos portátiles no, no, se, no eran para que fueran permanentes, era algo temporal. And then the next two areas, uh, similar to PRC, Gateway uh, is currently housed in portable buildings in similar situation. Uh, the portables are not efficient in terms of energy consumption, uh, they're a temporary solution, and we're limited in space as we have more students who could benefit from being in Gateway. Uh, we're limited on the amount of space that we have. And then the third area that I'll be addressing this evening is related to our elementary campuses. Um, we have a declining enrollment in our school district, and I'll share some data with you, um, but we are well below capacity. If we look at uh, the campuses, elementary campuses, we're using less than two-thirds of our available classroom space compared to what we could hold in those buildings. And I'll give you some exact numbers here in just a minute. Otra cuestión de preocupación también es la escuela Gateway, porque es similar eh, la situación, porque hay espacio muy limitado. Los edificios portátiles también son muy antiguos y también el consumo de energía es ineficiente. Hay cupo limitado también. Y otro tema que va a exponer hoy el doctor Carmen es, el, es la disminución de inscripciones en las escuelas primarias. Están muy por debajo de la capacidad de las inscripciones y de hecho ahorita el cupo que tenemos en las escuelas es dos tercios de la capacidad. Okay, so as we began looking historically at our enrollment data here in San Benito CISD, and we can go back 07, 08, if that shows. 
Um, we had just over 11,000 students, 2008, 2009, approximately the same. In recent history, the largest enrollment this district had was over 11,300 in the 2010-11 and the 11-12 school years, and then it started to decline. And as our enrollment dropped, um, you'll notice that some of the charter schools and area uh, competitors that we have, their enrollment grew. En esta gráfica se, se muestra las inscripciones de este distrito a través de los años. Y como ustedes pueden ver, por ejemplo, en el año 2007-2008 teníamos más de 11,000 estudiantes. Y así se mantuvo por varios años. De hecho, la inscripción más alta fue en el año 2010-2011. Teníamos más de 11,300 estudiantes. De ese año para acá han disminuido las inscripciones y en ese tiempo también se ha visto que han aumentado las inscripciones en las escuelas charter. And so this data was through the uh, 2015-16 school year. So then we expanded this a little bit. We took a look at what last year's enrollment was in the 16-17 school year, a little over 10,600. This year, 10,400. If this trend continues, um, you can see that in five years, we continue to lose 150 to 200 students. In five years, by the 2022-23 school year, we could be down as low as 9,595 students or so. Um, and, and what has happened is we're, we're facing some competition. Charter schools have moved in, and they continue to move in. Uh, we received, back in November, notice that another charter school will be opening in this area. Um, they're competing for our students. They operate on, on a business model. They see that they can attract students into their buildings, and uh, they're wanting to do so. They see idea being, being successful, and it's likely not going to stop if other areas of our state are uh, any indication. Como pueden ver también en esta gráfica, si continuamos perdiendo estudiantes, en cinco años tendríamos como 9,500 estudiantes. Y eso se debe también a que han, están aumentando las escuelas charter alrededor de nuestro distrito. De hecho, se le acaba de notificar al distrito que una escuela charter nueva se va a abrir este, también. Y esas escuelas funcionan con el aspecto del negocio. Entonces, va, si siguen aumentando esas escuelas, nosotros podemos seguir perdiendo estudiantes. So, currently, based on the number of students we have, we could operate our district uh, with 10 elementary campuses open instead of the 12 that we currently have. If this trend of uh, declining enrollment continues in five years, we could operate with eight elementary schools and we could be discussing the closure of a middle school uh, from three down to two. Ahorita, actualmente, tenemos 10 escuelas primarias disponibles para inscripción, basado en el número de estudiantes que tenemos inscritos. Pero, si siguen disminuyendo las inscripciones, así como las estamos viendo a través de los años, quizás en cinco años solamente tendríamos ocho primarias y podríamos hasta cerrar alguna de las secundarias. Or, we can try to be innovative, try to bring something different into the school district, try to meet our, our kids' needs, and at the same time, take, a, take advantage of the area that we have in our quality buildings um, to meet the needs of our students. Okay, entonces también lo que podríamos hacer sería ser diferentes, innovado, innovadores, y utilizar los edificios que ya tenemos para hacer algo diferente para nuestros estudiantes. So, some of the process that we've used to this point, um, we've had multiple meetings, committee meetings, including our building committee, our curriculum committee with our board, We've also had multiple administrative meetings looking at what would best meet the needs of some of our students, what would meet the needs and to the families in our district um, so parents can make the best decision for their, their children. Uh, we also had two public town hall meetings, uh, one out at Riverside, one at San Benito High School, soliciting input from the community uh, prior to making any proposals. El procedimiento que se ha utilizado para llegar a esta propuesta y que ustedes como padres de familia puedan escoger la escuela de sus hijos. Uh, se han tenido reuniones de la mesa directiva, ha habido reuniones administrativas y también hubo dos reuniones de ayuntamiento. Una de ellas fue en Riverside y la otra fue en el High School de San Benito. So, first recommendation we made to the board. was that we repurpose our um, 
elementary campus over at Dr. Garza Elementary and in its place reopen it as a STEAM Academy with a focus on science, technology, engineering, the fine arts, and mathematics. We would still teach the full state curriculum, but on top of that, we would have um, activities for our students, cross-curricular activities. We would add in uh, some information and some activities involving drones, involving shooting. I have to be careful. I think every time I step out, I step out of range here. Um, but we would add several activities for our kids to reinforce and really take that education to the next level. Okay. Entonces, la primera recomendación es uh, reasignar la escuela Dr. Garza a una escuela que se llamaría STEAM Academy, por sus siglas en inglés, que representan ciencia, tecnología, ingeniería, artes y matemáticas. En esta escuela se enseñaría todo lo requerido por el Estado, pero también se agregarían actividades extracurriculares y también uh, se seguiría todo lo que es requerido en todas las áreas de instrucción. Okay, so some advantages and some disadvantages. Um, first of all, we could open that campus using our existing full-time equivalencies or our, our existing personnel. We would have no need to add personnel unless we're able to recruit more students back into our school district. Second, one of the most obvious advantages is that we would be able to provide a specialized instruction. For those students who have a higher aptitude or desire to excel in those areas, we would have something specific for them so they could be successful. Third, we hope that by offering choice to our parents for their students, we will be able to retain some of our students inside the district. And one of the other main advantages we hope is if we open a STEAM Academy, is we could recruit students to come back to San Benito CISD. Como todos los planes, siempre hay pros y contras. Y los pros de reasignar esta escuela a este tipo de academia sería utilizar el personal ya existente. No se, no se necesitaría personal adicional a menos de que se inscribieran estudiant estudiantes adicionales. Pero también se proporcionaría instrucción especializada para estos estudiantes que quieren aprender diferentes cosas y se quieren especializar en estas materias. Pero también nos ayudaría a retener a los estudiantes existentes en nuestro distrito y que no se vayan a otras escuelas pero incluso quisiéramos reclutar más estudiantes para que regresaran a nuestras escuelas de San Benito. Okay, some possible uh, negatives to this or some challenges to this. The uh, loss of a neighborhood elementary um, proposed as a, as a complete magnet school concept and whether we go forward in that same manner or alter it a little bit um, will be decided here shortly. But um, ideally, students who have these interests, these aptitudes, we would draw from across the, uh, the district uh, students would have a different type of uh, education available to them and potentially from outside the school district. If people apply for a transfer uh, into Dr. Garza um, as, as a STEAM Academy, we would be able to accept those students. We would also uh, have a little bit of money we would need to invest, but we can do so from existing uh, Title I, Title II federal funds that we have. Um, the second bullet here on the training costs. If we go forward with a, uh, with a STEAM Academy, we will not go forward with it in name alone. Uh, we intend to seek a national certification. There's not a STEAM certification, but there is a STEM certification. Um, so we want to make sure that we train our teachers, give them the latest and greatest professional development, and then make sure they have the supplies and the materials to be successful with this venture. And right along with that um, would be some additional supplies. If we go forward with a STEAM Academy, this would be a technology-rich environment. So I've listed out some of the things we would be spending some additional funds on, so these students have a great opportunity for a lot of hands-on activities here, including additional robotics, drones, computers, tablets, um, more hands-on um, interactive whiteboards. Just a technology-rich environment, so those students who have an aptitude and a desire to excel in that area would be able to do so. Como todo, siempre hay desventajas, y en este tipo de propuestas hay varias. Una de las desventajas sería perder uh, la escuela primaria de la comunidad vecina. O sea, los que viven alrededor de la escuela, que traen a sus niños a la escuela, ese se, se, se perdería ese concepto. También incluiría costos, porque las maestras tendrían que estar capacitadas y se ofrecerían capacitaciones nacionales que tienen su costo, pero hay fondos monetarios que se pueden utilizar. Y también incluiría mucha tecnología. 
Entonces también habría costos de suministros como robótica, drones, computadoras, tabletas, etc. Okay, and additionally, um, again, I'll go back to the staffing. <coughs> we would not have a need to add any personnel. Um, the idea is to be able to save jobs, actually, instead of losing students, which would then lead to losing staff. We're hoping to be able to stem that a little bit, uh, level off and possibly grow a little bit. Um, likely, we would start with a K-5 setting. Propose a timeline. Um, we have public hearings going on now. Um, the board could take action could take action as early as the uh, February 13th board meeting. From there, it would be a short timeline to make sure we have the right principal in place for that campus uh, from a pool of our existing elementary principals, would not be an outside hire. We would identify the rest of our office personnel fairly quickly as well, making sure we have the assistant principals and counselors in place um, who can buy into this type of an approach with First Team Academy. Once we have those people on board, we would finalize um, our admission criteria for that campus and hopefully begin enrollment as early as March 26th, uh, shortly after spring break, so we can start getting ideas of how many students we would have on that campus, and then identify the faculty and our remaining, remaining staff uh, toward the end of April there, so we would be ready to go and open the doors in August, um, including the training and all of the uh, planning and preparation that would have to take place over the summer. En cuestión, de en cuestión de personal, se utilizaría personal existente en el distrito. Sin personal adicional, a menos de que se inscriban estudiantes adicionales. Esta academia sería de grado kinder a quinto. Y en cuestión de tiempo, comenzaríamos con audiencias públicas como la del día de hoy. Y eh, habría una reunión de la junta directiva para el 13 de marzo y muy posiblemente se pueda hacer la propuesta final para entonces. Se tendría que identificar un director o directora para el 16 de febrero. Y esto se escogería dentro de los directores existentes de este distrito. Cualquier director de primaria este, puede solicitar el puesto y se harán recomendaciones. También se identificaría el personal de la oficina antes del 2 de marzo. Se determinarían también los criterios de admisión para esta academia. Las inscripciones podrían comenzar desde el 26 de marzo y ya para el 20 de abril ya debería de estar todo el personal de maestros y el resto del personal. Okay, the uh, second recommendation that I made to the school board and likely why most of you are here this evening um, involves the repurposing of this campus right here. Um, the recommendation was to turn this from Landrum Elementary School to Landrum Educational Complex and make it home to our Positive Redirection Center and home to our gateway for graduation. It would take our, our students, secondary students, out of a portable setting, put them into a brick and mortar, a regular campus right here, and um, would help with our efficiency, energy efficiency, by using the square footage that we're already paying to, uh, to cool and to light. Um, and it would also give our students a regular campus to have their classes in, not, uh, not portable buildings. La segunda recomendación, que es por la que estamos aquí el día de hoy, es reasignar a la Escuela Landrum como un complejo educativo que se utilizaría para las escuelas Gateway, EPRC y quizás otros departamentos. Uh, ya no tendrían que utilizar los edificios portátiles, ya tendrían un edificio uh, de material y aumentaría el uso eficiente del espacio. So earlier I mentioned that um, we could operate with 10 elementary campuses. We had, at least when I prepared this presentation, we had 5,048 students. In our 12 elementary campuses, we have a capacity um, available of 7,678. So we're using just under two-thirds of our, our possible space. Um, operating in such a manner, obviously, is not a very efficient way to proceed. And we would like to, uh, to kind of head some of that off a little bit. An advantage, or some of the other advantages here would be um, there's not much cost for setup. There would be some moving of some furniture. Obviously, the restrooms are set up for smaller children. We'd have to do some retrofitting, but that would not be a large expense. Um, we can decrease our utility usage, the maintenance that we're currently um, dealing with on the uh, portable buildings. And as we move two secondary campuses together, there would be some, some staffing through attrition where we could become more efficient um, 
having both on the same in the same building. Negative here, biggest one probably, would be that we would lose um, a neighborhood elementary, and um, we'll, we'll address that. But um, every single student within our school district would have a traditional campus as their home campus. We would keep our um, open enrollment available so, so t parents could apply for their students to attend other elementaries. And then, of course, the advantage of having a STEAM Academy available to you. Y las ventajas de este complejo educativo sería aumentar el uso eficiente del espacio que ya tenemos. Porque como mencionó anteriormente el doctor Carmen, tenemos capacidad para, para más estudiantes, pero solamente estamos usando dos tercios de la capacidad. Hay cupo para 7,678 estudiantes, pero solamente tenemos 5,000 estudiantes. Otra ventaja es que al convertir esta escuela a ese complejo para Gateway y PRC, sería de un costo muy bajo porque no se tendría que hacer muchas preparaciones para el edificio. Uno de los cambios que se necesitarían hacer sería uh, el re reacondicionamiento de los baños, porque los estudiantes serían un poco más mayores, más grandes, se tendría que hacer ese reacondicionamiento, pero al mismo tiempo también se disminuirían los gastos de servicios públicos, de mantenimiento y de personal. Y la desventaja viene siendo que al resignar esta escuela, se pierde la escuela de la comunidad vecina. Pero al mismo tiempo recuerden que va a haber oportunidad para inscribir a sus hijos en cualquier otra escuela del distrito, incluyendo la Academia STEAM. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, criteria that we used to determine the uh, two campuses for our proposal. Uh, we looked at the logistics of it. We looked for campuses where there were neighboring campuses close by, that we could move students to as their home schools. Uh, we looked at the enrollment, looking for those campuses that were low in enrollment. We looked for the STEAM Academy, not just for a campus that was under-enrolled, but for the capacity of a, of a campus. Dr. Garza, for example, will hold nearly 800 students. We currently have 384 students attending, so we're using just, just under half of our capacity on that campus. Um, and again, that's just not an efficient, efficient way to operate. Um, this campus in particular, with the schools that are close by and the low enrollment, um, just based on the objective data, made it a reasonable option. Algo que se tomó en cuenta para resonificar la, el plan de las escuelas fueron las inscripciones de cada escuela. Por ejemplo, en la escuela Garza, Dr. Garza, perdón, Hay capacidad para 800 estudiantes, pero solamente hay 384 inscritos. En esta escuela también hay capacidad para más estudiantes y está como a la mitad de la capacidad. Pero también se tomó en cuenta el hecho de que hubiera escuelas cercanas disponibles para poder resonificar a los estudiantes. Ok, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, rezoning proposal specifically. <coughs> We have all of our uh, proposals up along the wall here. Um, you can look at either during or after the meeting if you, if you didn't see them before. I'm going to talk specifically about uh, Landrum and, and the schools that are, will be impacted by this. Uh, not the full district-wide picture, but again, you have, you have access to all of those there as well as online. Uh, this is our current setup. Uh, you can see all 12 of our elementary campuses and the uh, zones we currently cover. Um, all the way from Rangerville, La Paloma, La Encantada, Leal, Judge Oscar de la Fuente, Sullivan, Garza, here's Landrum, Cash, Downs, Frank Roberts, and that must be Fred Booth right in there. Uh, so that's our, that's our current setup. Esta es la zona, la zonificación actual que tenemos para las 12 escuelas, como pueden ver, y están representadas las 12 primarias. Okay, so the proposal for um, the rezoning for the home campuses for Landrum Elementary, um, we looked at dividing right here along Dick Dowling Street. Uh, these people who live in this area right here, their home campus, if this is approved, would become Sullivan Elementary. This longer section of Landrum, where we have 82 students who live in that area and actually go to Landrum, uh, would be rezoned over to uh, Dr. Cash Elementary. 
Y esto es la propuesta de rezonificación para los estudiantes de la Escuela Landrum. Como pueden ver, el área que está cruzado con las, uh, con las líneas rojas serían un, aproximadamente 64 estudiantes que se rezonificarían para la Escuela Sullivan. Y lo que pueden ver en la, en la línea roja uh, de abajo del mapa representaría 82 estudiantes que irían a la Escuela Elemental Dr. Cash. And then as we're kind of pulling away from the center of our district a little bit to make space at uh, Cash Elementary, we would continue this line right along here, along Dowling. Um, these students could then attend right next door to Frank Roberts, and then Cash would have most of its original area plus the, uh, the new portion from Landrum Elementary. Esta es la resonificación para la escuela Dr. Cash, y la división sería la calle Dick Dowling. Entonces, algunos estudiantes... Um, irían a la escuela elemental Frank Roberts. Okay, so how that would look then with this, this part of the district, um, Sullivan is, would lose a large portion of its um, square footage or square mileage, but not, uh, not that much in, in population, student population. And the current proposal has it picking up a fair amount from Garza and then this, uh, this section right here from Landrum. So as far as logistics and the travel time, we kept it very close together. Entonces, muestra esta gráfica cómo se resonificarían algunos estudiantes para la escuela Sullivan y, para la, y, y también de la escuela Dr. Garza. The uh, proposed zone for Dr. Cash would retain most of its area, and then this larger area from Landrum, where really most of the population is, is centered right up in here, uh, would go just a few blocks over here to Dr. Cash. So again, logistically, uh, very close together, but this would be the new zone, if approved, for Dr. Cash Elementary. La nueva zona para la escuela Dr. Cash incluiría lo que se ve eh, de color verde, pero de hecho la población solamente está en, en una parte de esa área, y, y en, este, en, este, en este plan se mantendría la mayoría de los estudiantes que pertenecen a Dr. Cash. Solamente se agregarían algunos estudiantes que pertenecen a la escuela Landrum. Y then Frank Roberts, the effect from this would be from this small section here, from Dowling over, that currently is, um, is assigned to go to Dr. Cash. They would go very closely again logistically. Um, very close right over here to Frank Roberts Elementary. Y en este plan, ustedes pueden ver el área en rosa, que es el área de la calle Dick Dowling. Es una área muy pequeña, y esa, esa área pequeña ahora estaría resonificada a la escuela elemental Frank Roberts. All right, so at this time, we're going to transition back. We're going to bring the uh, school board back up onto the stage. We will set up a microphone for you, I think, here in the, uh, the center of the cafeteria. If you have questions, um, Mr. Vargas will visit with you a little bit about that, but you, you can line up, ask your questions. We're going to try to keep to time limits here so we can answer all questions that you all might have. Um, I think we're looking about one minute for you to ask a question. We'll try to take no longer than two minutes per question to answer. Uh, and if you'll respect that, then everyone who has a, a question should have a chance to, uh, to get up here so that we can address it. We okay. should be set up here just momentarily. Thank you. En estos momentos, los miembros de la mesa directiva regresan a sus respectivos lugares. Se les va a dar oportunidad a ustedes de hacer preguntas. Se les va a poner un micrófono en el centro. Este, se les daría un minuto para hacer su pregunta y habría unos dos minutos aproximadamente para que a, a algún miembro de la mesa directiva les pueda dar una respuesta. Eh, pueden empezar, este, pueden formarse también en línea, este, eh, tan pronto estén listos ellos para las preguntas. So I just wanted to add a little bit more to what Dr. Carmen says in terms of this uh, setup of the questioning. Uh, first, though, you got a lot of information about what we're planning, what we're proposing, and what we're, uh, we're about to do. So hopefully that presentation itself answered and clarified uh, some of your questions that you had coming in. And also looking forward to the other questions that you have that may not have been clarified um, as a result of the presentation. Uh, just to dovetail what Dr. Carmen said, I want to make sure that we 
in this forum. Stay positive, stay constructive. Please refrain from attacking anybody personally or be negative. If you have something very specific to say that may seem negative, please come, one, come up one-on-one -on -one and we'll gladly uh, do that. But we do welcome tough questions. We welcome any questions. Like I said, we're in this together, so I want to make sure that we're all on the same page leaving here. So make sure that any question you have that you do come up to the microphone. Um, so in that case, uh, well, I'll let Dr. Quesada translate that last portion. Uh, el señor Vargas explica que espera que se hayan uh, aclarado sus dudas o sus preguntas acerca de esta propuesta, pero igualmente se les invita a que hagan sus preguntas en una manera positiva, constructiva, sin atacar a nadie y que si hay algo en especial que, que quieran decir, lo pueden decir individualmente después de la junta. Okay, so if you have any questions, please come up to the microphone. I'll ask you to state your, uh, your full name and if you have any students here attending at Landrum Elementary. Hi, good evening. Hello. Uh, Cynthia Gonzalez and I'm a grandma. Uh, I don't have any children here at Landrum, but I do have them in the district. My question is on the um, cost for the training costs. Uh, you indicated that you're gonna use Title II funding uh, for the robotics, drones, and computer tablets, you say there's a cost of 150. My question is, are you all um, seeking any kind of grants for this to pay for some of these computers, some of these robotics? Because I know there's a lot of grants, either through Dell or other computer companies. That's a, that's a great question. Yes, ma'am. Um, the state also has um, another program that we are applying for in our grant that we're applying for that would enable us to uh, buy some computers on, on their dime and check them out to our students. Uh, we are currently in the process of applying for that grant. Um, we have not yet um, received it, so I, I, I don't want to list that up there because it's, it's not a definite. Um, additionally, we are looking into the possibility of, with Garza, making it a, a charter within a school district, Sa same concept, same magnet concept, um, and TEA does offer a grant for that specifically. Okay, one more question. Um, so, so you're combining the schools. Um, what is going to happen with the staffing? Are they? You're going. I know that there's not going to be a lot for everybody. Yeah. So uh, when I opened up my remarks, I wanted to make. Sh I said that we are. Um, doing this in the best interest of students and the best interest of staff. So to that point, we are losing no staff. No staff is losing their jobs. Uh, we hope through attrition that we will be able to level out uh, where we want to be. But that is first and foremost what, as a board, uh, we are committed to is not letting go of anybody so nobody is losing their jobs. Okay. Now, um, with the STEAM, um, are there any like certifications once the students complete their kinder to fifth grade, any type of credits? Uh, not, not for the elementary, but okay. um, we do plan to extend this So, in, in a couple of directions. One, vertically, we will be seeking um, the T-STEM certification for at least one of our middle schools, anywhere from one to three, uh, the following year, and then the same T-STEM certification for our high school so that the students progress. Yes, ma'am, they would be leaving with certifications. Mm -hmm. And then additionally, if this is successful, we would look at increasing our number of, um, of academies district-wide. So we might open up a second or a third STEAM Academy. We might consider a Fine Arts Academy, um, trying to give our parents true choice for where their students attend. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Carmen, can you uh, explain to them what T-STEM is? Sorry, it's, it's, it's a Texas Science, Technology, um, Engineering and Mathematics certification that uh, the TEA certifies off on the campuses based on the courses that you offer. Thank you. And also, we have Dr. Quesada translating the questions and answers for our uh, parents who speak Spanish. La señora González hizo tres preguntas. Una tenía que ver con el costo eh, de la capacitación para los maestros y preguntaba si se iba a aplicar para fondos adicionales, aparte de los que ya existen en el distrito. Se le explicó que sí, que ahorita están aplicando para fondos adicionales. También el doctor Carmen explica que la Escuela Garza se puede convertir en una escuela charter, es aprobada por el Estado, y si es así, también se pueden recibir fondos adicionales. Su segunda pregunta fue en cuestión de personal, si el personal iba a perder puestos, y se le explicó que no, nadie va a perder puestos, 
va, se va a utilizar el personal existente. Y la última pregunta fue si iba a haber una certificación para los estudiantes que fueran a la Academia STEAM. En este momento a esos estudiantes no se les otorgaría ninguna certificación, pero en un futuro, cuando ya progresen los estudiantes a una secundaria o middle school, la, la escuela middle school o secundaria podría obtener una certificación de T-STEM. Thank you, Dr. Quesada. Hello. Hi, my name is Jenny Cornejo, and yes, I have two uh, children here in Lander. Um, my question, um, you clarified the thing about, or the question about the faculty. However, um, what about like special faculty, like um, music, um, after school program, um, coaches, like, I don't know if a school could have like more than four, co or I don't know how you would place them. I know teachers can be placed, but um, though, though that was one thing that I was wondering what would happen to them. Um, also, uh, what would happen to the Ninos Head Start that we have here? What would, where would that be placed? Okay, want to make sure you're, you're done asking. Um, so with those positions that aren't, aren't core teachers, we would transfer them based on where our enrollment goes. So if we had a large number of students at uh, our STEAM Academy, for example, we would move those, those teachers there. Uh, the after school program, we will, um, if this is approved, we will apply um, for an amendment to our grant to um, see if the state would allow us to move this to, an, to another campus that does not have a grant funded after school program. Um, if they would not allow that to happen in this grant cycle, we would likely fund it locally for a year until we hit the next grant cycle and then it would be funded by, by the state. <clears throat> so we will move every employee um, into a position based on enrollment. We're not, we're not doing away with any positions. The, um, the Head Start that's currently associated with this campus would no longer exist. Um, that would be up to the Head Start program to determine if they wanted to apply um, to team up with one of our other campuses. Um, that, that would be up to Head Start whether or not they, they determine and they, that would be feasible for them. Um, otherwise, we would accommodate our students through our existing pre-K program at our other 11 campuses. Dr. Quesada. La señora Cornejo hizo la pregunta acerca de los maestros de música o de los maestros de después de escuela, que qué iba a pasar con ellos con la transición. Se le explicó que no van a perder sus puestos, simplemente se transferirían a, un, a otro plantel, a otra escuela. Su segunda pregunta fue respecto al programa de Head Start que está en esta escuela. Y se le explicó que ese programa sí dejaría de existir aquí pero puede seguir en alguna otra escuela, los niños se podrían ingresar a un Head Start de otra escuela o al pre-kinder que ofrece el distrito escolar. Hello. Hi, Esther Hernández. I have three, three grandchildren here at Landrum and one at Head Start. Um, the cutoff is at South Dick, at Dick Dowling. Is it like that side of Dick Dowling goes to Sullivan and this side goes to Dr. Cash? No, ma'am, we took um, all of Dick Dowling, and I'm looking to my transportation people. All of Dick Dowling would go to the other school, right? So to Sullivan, um, and then once we got past Dick Dowling, that area would go to, to Dr. Cash Elementary. So it wouldn't be allowed to change from Sullivan to... You can, still, you can still, it's still open enrollment. You can still apply, but your, your designated home campus, if you live on Dick Dowling, would become Sullivan. But just like now, you can apply to go to other campuses. So on the slide where there were 140 or so students who live in Landrum and attend Landrum, but in reality we have over 300 because some people apply to attend here. But we also have people who live in the Landrum um, zone, but they've applied to go to other campuses. That option will still be available to all of our parents. Okay, what about transportation? Are you going to provide transportation? So depending on the campus you choose. Um, similar to now, there will be, I can't if we have three or four options for, for the open enrollment. Um, so if you apply to go out to Rangerville, no ma'am. But if you apply to one of the schools in the list, the three or four that, you're, that are open to you, yes ma'am, we would still provide that transportation and we will provide transportation district-wide to the STEAM Academy. 
Okay, and uh, how safe is it going to be here with the PRC? How safe is it going to be here with the PRC? Oh. Um, well, ma'am, we currently are holding it temporarily at our, our ninth grade campus, and I don't believe we've had any incidents that have come outside of the building and had to have been dealt with. Um, we staff it very well with security. We staff it very well with our drill sergeants, and those uh, students who are being given a second chance um, are, are kept very well in check, ma'am. And are they in, in uh, portable buildings right now? We closed down the portable buildings at PRC, and we put them into a pod over at our ninth grade campus at VMA. So is this like really a done deal already? The, or are you taking, yes it is? The board will consider this um, formally at the February 13th meeting. Um, it is not a done deal, but I, I think it has some fair merit to it. Um, but we are certainly listening to the input from our parents. Dr. Quisada. Okay. Uh, la señora Hernández tuvo varias preguntas y una de ellas fue la, de la división de la calle Dick Dowling y se le explica que, que de hecho la división de Dick Dowling indica que los niños uh, de esa área irían a la escuela Sullivan. Otra de sus preguntas fue respecto al transporte y si y se le responde que si es una escuela a donde los niños pertenecen, se va a ofrecer el transporte. Igualmente, si van a la Academia STEAM, también se ofrecería el transporte. Y su última pregunta fue que si era seguro que estuvieran aquí los estudiantes de PRC. Y se le respondió que, uh, de hecho, ahorita que están en la escuela VMA, no ha habido ningún incidente y están los instructores muy al pendiente de cada uno de ellos para que no ocurran incidentes. Thank you, Dr. Quesada. Hello. Hi, my name is Laura Garza. I have four kids attending here. My question is, with special needs, how is that going to, because I know there's, I'm not sure how many students here that are under that department, but as far as them being transferred to other schools, are they still going to be receiving the same amount of attention that they need? Um, and our ARG meeting is going to have to be hosted again because there's a lot of information that the kids, or should I say that the, the staff know the children well, and then to, for the children to be sent to a new campus, that's going to be a big change for those students. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying not to hog all the mic time here. Any board member wants to answer, they're, they're welcome to. But um, I mean, we, we will provide the um, same high quality of services that we currently do for all of our special needs students. And if a transfer R is necessary so that the receiving campus has all that information, mm -hmm. then we'll have transfer R's for every one of our special needs students. So the professionals and paraprofessionals at that receiving campus know exactly what the IEP or BIP, as the case may be, um, is known to them and they will be ready to, uh, to provide an education for every one of our special need kids. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. La pregunta de la señora Carza es respecto a los estudiantes con uh, necesidades de educación especial y que qué va a pasar con ellos cuando se transfieran en cuestión de sus documentaciones y en cuestión de su instrucción. Y la respuesta es que aunque cambien a otra escuela, los documentos uh, serán... Um, continuarán con el estudiante y se seguirá ofreciendo la misma instrucción en cualquier otra escuela. Hello. Hello, hi, my name is uh, Brenda Villarreal and I have three daughters attending this school. I know you guys said that you guys had the best interest in the children's as well. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, like me. I am currently I have a year and a half battling with breast cancer. I tested positive for what is called BRCA1, which is a genetic mutation. So I still have a lot of surgeries pending. Um, my daughters here, the staff, everybody, they know about my situation and they know that sometimes my daughters might act up. They know that it's, it could be due to the fact of my problem that I'm having. And so my concern would be, like if my children get sent to another school, you know, the staff isn't going to know what's going on, you know, I'm going to have to go ahead and begin again, like having them open up to those teachers. 
depending where they're going to be placed. Also, I know um, Dr. Cash, well, they helped me out right here with the after school program. I, I am, you know, I'm very grateful for the after school program here because I like on February, I'm sorry, on the 16th, I just had a surgery. I'm not even supposed to be out of bed. I just came because this is very important to me. I know by the way you guys section the school district, my children will be placed in Dr. Cash. That I believe Dr. Cash does have an after school program, but I was aware it has, you have to pay in order for your student, for the student to be attending the after school program there. I don't know how true that is, but I mean, I, don't ha I wouldn't have the funds to have my kids attend the after school program there. Okay, so you, you, your two main questions, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to address them, and then if I miss something, please um, please follow up and make sure I answer them completely. Um, so first of all, regarding your unique situation, um, yeah, I don't have a simple answer for a complex problem, but as your students progress next year with new teachers, it's likely you would want to let those new teachers know the situation anyhow, whether they're going from third to fourth on this campus, for example, or going into new classroom, whether it's at Cash or, mm -hmm. or Sullivan or, or wherever. Um, so I think, that's, I, I think that's just part of the natural process for you. But as we um, reassign students to the other campuses, we will be reassigning the corresponding staff as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if we send 100 students to a different campus, we'll send roughly five teachers from, from this campus there. So, so you'll still have some familiarity Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the staff that you currently know, you'll, you'll still know some of them. Um, regarding the after school program, again, we will be filing for um, an amendment to our grant so that we can move the after school program from here to our other campuses and provide the same options for our students that we're providing now. Uh, if we can't get into this grant cycle with an amendment, we will fund it locally. So whatever program we offer here now for our students, we will offer to our same students same parents, whether it's at Cash or Sullivan. Mm. Okay. Yes, sir. Was, that, was that everything you asked? I'll make sure I got everything. Yeah. Okay. Mrs. Variad, rest assured that your students, if they go to Dr. Cash, they will participate in the after school program. Rest assured on that. You have my word. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. La señora Villarreal. Tiene dos preguntas que son de cuestión perso de índole personal, una respecto a su condición médica y explica a ella que los maestros de esta escuela ya conocen la situación y entienden y comprenden a sus hijos en cuestión del comportamiento y ella tiene uh, dudas acerca de si empiezan en otra escuela, empezar de nuevo y comentarle eso a los maestros o cómo lo vayan a atender. Uh, la respuesta es que los maestros van a estar al tanto de las situaciones y que incluso algunos maestros de esta escuela puedan ser los mismos maestros que estén en la escuela que van a pertenecer sus hijos. Y su segunda pregunta era respecto al programa de después de escuela que existe ahorita en esta escuela, porque ella tenía la impresión que en Dr. Cash se cobraba para ir a esos programas, pero se le acaba de asegurar que el programa que existe aquí lo van a cambiar también para otras escuelas porque se van a hacer arreglos a, a esos um, programas para que puedan continuar igual en otra escuela. Y la señora uh, García le asegura que aunque vaya a la escuela Dr. Cash, sus niños van a poder participar en el programa de después de escuela. Thank you, Dr. Estrada. Hello. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Clarissa Gonzalez Ladner. I'm not from the San Benito area, but I am an employee of the district and I work at PRC. And um, I wanted to come and give a pitch uh, for uh, your proposal. I'm in favor of the proposal. Um, I think it has a great deal of merit that you're giving brick and mortar opportunities and uh, trying to treat them with the same equality and fair chance that they deserve. Uh, none, of what, none of us is perfect. And I'm, all around, it's uh, uh, good for safety. It's uh, good for the environment. Uh, I think it's good for their education. 
Uh, it's good for their attitude, their motivation, their, their image, their confidence. Uh, so I wholeheartedly approve of, uh, of, the, uh, of the proposal and hope that you will vote in favor. Uh, as for the community, I would like to allay their fears that they may have uh, for the image that perhaps these types of schools may have. Uh, I have a law enforcement background. Um, I have a Department of Defense background. I have a Archdiocese of San Antonio religious background. Of course, I have an educational background. And what y'all may not know is that we are a very safe center no matter where we are housed, because we run a, have to run a very tight ship. And because their consequences are more threatening and long lasting, lasting and court ordered at times, and the drills are fantastic. And I can speak like from here to Northeast Independent School District in San Antonio, where I also taught. And uh, in San Antonio, the Archdiocese is in a very poor area of town. And I've worked with all sorts of populations. And when I work for the state, I work for hardened criminals. And I can tell you that by far, our drills are very trained and very focused. Because we have a smaller population, uh, we all have a lot of eyes. There's many eyes on this smaller population. And with the brick and mortar, you're going to have safety because you have quality doors, Thank not you. something like the portable buildings that could have been blown away at any storm. Thank you. And a fence. And, but I do have a question because this was just, uh, you know, giving a heads up that they don't community does not have okay. to worry um, perhaps a fence because we did that uh, for the pod so that's just a recommendation recommendation but my questions are uh, because gateway and PRC although they're the same types of populations their curriculum and the way they function are totally different uh, would the building be split in any way, like would, or is it set up that way already, or would there be a wall or, or something that would go up? Uh, that's one question. And uh, the other is kind of a question and also kind of a recommendation because loss of population and the different places where I have lived, uh, to offer a zero period or a ninth or tenth period uh, for PRC and also for the STEAM or what, or any other um, to um, like a, a zero period or a ninth or tenth period, or even in Santa, in the big cities, I know San, San Benito is not that big, but to draw, but they have a high school at night if you know what I mean. Change our, change our whole okay. way of operating hours. Okay, Dr. Carmen, you wanna take that question? Yes, I will real quickly here. Um, we are not building a wall. Okay. Um, no. no we, have, we have separate hallways. Okay. Um, we'll run the programs in different hallways. We'll still have the administration for both campuses regarding scheduling, it's up to the principals and to bring the recommendations forward to our assistant superintendent for academics, that will not change. We will maintain the process. Thank you. Dr. Guisado. Okay. Mm. Uh, ella hizo dos preguntas, una acerca de que si iban a estar dos escuelas aquí, que si iba a haber una pared, y se le contesta que no va a haber ninguna pared, simplemente van a estar separados por diferentes pasillos, y también pregunta si va a haber un periodo en la mañana o un último periodo, Uh, que se le llama noveno o se le llama uh, cero y eso va a ser una decisión de los directores pero más que nada ella aplaude esta decisión, está muy a favor de este tipo de, de escuela porque dice que en cuestión de los temores que tiene la comunidad acerca de estos estudiantes ella cree que va a estar mucho más seguro en este edificio a que sean los edificios portátiles en donde están 
ella explica que ella tiene una extensa experiencia en leyes, en educación religiosa y también en educación y que trabajan muy intensamente con los estudiantes y que hay muchas consecuencias para ellos y ellos les asegura a la comunidad que no va a haber ningún uh, problema con estos estudiantes. Thank you, Dr. Quezada. Uh, we have about two more questions and to make sure we respect time, these will be the last two questions asked. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Lua Seves, and uh, I have a son and a daughter who attend this school and also a four-year-old who attends the Head Start. I know someone mentioned earlier about the special services for special needs. Uh, my four-year-old at the Head Start, he actually receives services from the school district. You know, they, they go to the Head Start and pull them out and bring them over here. Um, if the Head Start ceases to exist, would he still be receiving those services? Would he still have the opportunity? I just want him to be you know, prepared for elementary school. Uh, yes, ma'am. We um, will still provide those services. Now, number one, if, if he's four turning five, he would be in one of our kinder programs next year. Um, but if you're still four years old, then he would qualify for the pre-K program, whether it's Sullivan or Cash or whichever, whichever direction you would go for your family. But um, yes, ma'am, we will still provide those services. Uh, whatever students qualify in terms of special needs, special services, we will continue to provide. We will not lose services. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. La pregunta tiene que ver con los niños de educación especial que participan en el programa Head Start. Y ella tiene preguntas respecto a que si ya no va a estar el programa Head Start, cómo se le van a ofrecer esos servicios al niño. Pero ya sea que vaya pre-kinder o vaya kinder, ese niño va a recibir los servicios que necesita en cualquier escuela del distrito. Thank you, Dr. Quesada. Hello. Hi, Miriam Mahalik. I'm an employee of the district. Um, for the admission criteria for the STEAM, when will that be released? Because you don't have a date on here. Admission criteria for STEAM. Right, so somewhere between identifying our um, administrators and counselors for that campus and before we start enrollment. Um, I didn't put a, a deadline on it, but we'd have roughly you know, three weeks to, to iron it out. There, there are several so March, models. March, pretty much. Right, yes, okay. There are several models that exist currently across the state. We have those. Um, the principals who are interested in that position are looking at those, and they are devising their recommendations as part of their plan. Um, so I, th I think in the three-week period, we would have it and be able to communicate it out to our public. Okay. And how many students are you projecting to have at that school? So what we're considering is four teachers per grade level um, in kinder through four, 22 per classroom, so 88 per grade. Um, in fifth grade, you look about 24 per classroom, so 96. Um, however, starting the enrollment as early as we are, if we have a, a higher than expected um, application, num number of applications, um, because that campus holds nearly 800, if we have a lot of early applications, we could add on and run probably six core teachers per grade level. Oh, okay. And one more question. Um, the ACUs and the PPCDs that are located here, would they move as a group with their teachers, with their TAs, or would they be spread out? We would move them as a unit. We'd move the full group, uh, whether that's Cash, Sullivan, we, we would move them as a group. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Y estas fueron las últimas tres preguntas. La primera tiene que ver que cuando se va a decidir la criteria, el criterio de admisión y eso va a ser después de que se seleccione el director y antes de que empiecen las inscripciones entonces es aproximadamente el mes de marzo y como existen diferentes modelos para este tipo de academia los, eh, ya cuando estén seleccionados los directores ellos van a decidir cuál sería el criterio porque depende del modelo que es, escojan para esta academia la segunda pregunta es cuántos estudiantes habría en esta academia y la proyección ahora es que vaya a haber cuatro maestros por grado con 22 estudiantes en cada salón, pero como esta escuela tiene capacidad para 800 estudiantes, según veamos las inscripciones, podría aumentar a seis maestros por grado. Y por último pregunta si las unidades de educación especial de PPCD se, se cambiarían en su totalidad o individualmente y la respuesta es que se convertiría como unidad, se cambiaría a otra escuela. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Quesada. So we'll do some closing remarks. Uh, each board member will have an opportunity to say uh, something from their behalf. Uh, so I'll start off with uh, just like I opened it. Um, 
like I said, change is not easy, but the fact that y'all are here asking questions, getting clarifications, I think is important um, to know where we're heading. Uh, we're, we're, we're in this together. And I think, uh, just like I said, it, we're in the best interest, we're, we're in the business of making sure we're educating all students. We had some questions here from special needs students. We had questions from those who wish to join the STEAM Academy. It, it runs the spectrum, but rest assured that we're here and the, the decisions we're gonna make are gonna be in, in your best interest in making sure that this transition will be um, as smooth as, as possible. So thank you again for, for joining. Um, if you have any further questions, feel free to stick around and ask us personally. For those of you who are a little shy to come up to the microphone, we'll be available for about 10 minutes to answer some questions. So thanks again. I got a couple of comments to make uh, myself. As far as, uh, you know, as far as this whole process is concerned and, and uh, being a public servant, which you guys put us on this seat, you know, th these are the challenges that we face you know, this is a, these are the challenges that we're facing on a daily basis with the data that we've acquired. Um, you know, we're competing against the charter schools, and you know, unfortunately, yes, they are taking our kids. And um, you know, so one thing that we try to do here is, is uh, of course, we want to give our kids the best opportunity to succeed and all the resources necessary, and also to keep our wonderful staff here. And I, and I say this over and over again. Um, you know, uh, so in order for us to do that, you know, there's things that we need to do in order to move this district in a positive direction uh, before we start losing more kids and then eventually losing staff. So as your public servant, you know, um, I, the best interest, I have the best interest of your, of your kids in mind, and of course as you all as well as taxpayers, but uh, also our, our, our awesome staff that we have. So uh, I just want you guys to know that we care about you very much and the decisions that we make is in the best interest of our family as an organization and our community as well. Thank you all so much. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Um, and with your questions, rest assured that the decision we make will be in the best interest of our students, your child, okay? I know that it, it, it's a hard decision, but it's one that, that's gonna have to be made. And with, your, with our best interests, it will go as well. We will follow every child into Dr. Garza if we have to. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'd just like to add, uh, STEAM is one step that we're gonna take. Uh, as we're looking into it, uh, we have another one problem we got. Special need kids are the ones that can't see, can't talk, and uh, visually uh, can do both of it. So presently, besides STEAM, we're looking into getting teachers to address those kids. So those are other uh, opportunities we're get, trying to get to the parents to have here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I thought we were coming down the, down the line. We skipped you. <laughs> okay, well, first of all, thank you all for attending this meeting tonight. As the, I am for the, 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 the STEM project here, the, the program. It's gonna challenge our, our children. It's the, like anything new that comes along, there's gonna be some little things that need to be ironed out. Uh, I ask for patience, well, the board asks for patience as far as that goes. Uh, Dr. Carmen, do we have something in, in, in line, like say if the people wanna ask questions later on, like on the website or, or a contact person regarding more questions than this? We had not set up a separate uh, well, yeah, you know, like, like we're having some, some, uh, some meetings here, but I'm sure that some of these uh, uh, parents might have other questions later on or somebody that couldn't attend. Do we have something in, as to set up so that they can address, so we can address whatever concerns or questions they have? And if not, can we just, you know, maybe, maybe uh, put something like, uh, out there like, like an, an online or what have you? And if we do, please make it bilingual. Demand for, for all parents. In so far as the, the special needs uh, children, we will address that demand, you know. So we want everybody to be successful in the district. So look, uh, again, thank you all for coming over.
Uh, we have any other questions? I'm pretty sure we're gonna have something set up so that you all can get your, your questions answered. Uh, and like uh, our board president stated, we'll be around if you wanna ask questions personally to the board individually. I thank you again. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank everyone for um, showing up today and uh, expressing your concerns and your, uh, and your thoughts. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that, I, that I see in San Benito is that uh, it is difficult for us to change. And, uh, you know, and change is hard for all of us. Um, but nonetheless, as uh, the rest of the board members mentioned, is that we are trying to be very innovative. We are trying to bring... Uh, new ideas to the school district to make sure that your kids and your children have the best education that we can offer. Uh, school districts around the, uh, the Rio Grande Valley and even up in the upper uh, part of the state are already talking about San Benito and how innovative we've been, how the new board have actually embraced change and we took on the challenges to make sure that what we're doing is for the best interest of our community and of our, and of our students. So first of all, I thank you for entrusting all of us for, and putting us on, on the board to make those, those tough decisions. It's not, it's not every day that we make these decisions and, and, and it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes a lot of planning. And I'd like to commend Dr. Carmen because uh, being here for only a few months, uh, he's brought in some very good ideas uh, and he's, he's pretty much embraced the board and really thought about how we can actually begin to bring students back into our district. We are losing a, a battle that, uh, that the state pretty much has already embraced. And our charter schools around our district and around the uh, Rio Grande Valley or, and even in the state of Texas and in our nation, they're not going to go away. They're not going to go away. And I think yesterday there was a question regarding taxpayers' money. Well. Taxpayer funds are really being spent on charter schools, private schools, and other schools. So as board members, as superintendents, teachers, uh, principals, we have to start thinking outside the box and find ways to begin bringing our students back. And that means we are, we are embracing excellent customer service. That, that makes a change. Now you have a choice, and we want to make San Benito CISD your choice for your students' education. Thank you very much, and good night. Good evening, uh, buenas tardes. Um, I have a question for Dr. Ned, whether, do we have a, a parent survey for all parents, especially parents that are not here, that they can uh, go online and take pertaining to this project? And would the survey be also in Spanish? I think uh, in lieu of the survey is why we had the public hearings. Um, but to Mr. Gonzalez's question, we're obviously um, asking parents to email any questions you may have to Dr. Carmen and administration. So there's no surveys? Okay. No, in the public hearings yesterday and today supplanted the parent surveys. Okay, thank you. Okay. On that note, I uh, want to thank you again. Of course, before we end, I want to thank the ladies in the back for providing you the nutritious meals, so thank you. There are some still available if you want to take some home. I want to thank Dr. Quesada for your translations. Thank you so much. Um, and also the individuals recording us on camera, behind those cameras, and making sure that the entire public knows what we're talking about outside of this meeting. Thank you. So thank you again. Have a good night. And until uh, next time, do I have a motion to adjourn?
Moved by Mr. Mendez, do we have a second? Second by Mr. Lopez, all those in favor say aye. Aye, all those opposed. We adjourn exactly at 7.20 p.m.